some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. Now, remember, I, I, I said that that word and there should really not be there. Amen? It should really be pastor slash teachers. Because if you are a pastor, it is your job. It is your calling. It is your position to be a teacher. Amen? Why did he give some to be prophets and apostles and some to be prophets and some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teachers? To prepare, amen, verse 12, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of of the fullness of Christ. Now, before you sit down, I want to go to, to one slide that, that, that we had before. Now, uh, actually, this is the one that I want. Paul says in verse 12, why did God give some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers? Verse 12, why did he do it? to prepare God's people for works of service. Amen? So God gave these ministries to equip the body of Christ for works of service, which 
we looked at the six steps between infancy and maturity, and, and the last step is active involvement in Christian service. So what God is doing is he's preparing us through these six steps to get to this point where we're actively involved in Christian service. You can be seated. Now, I, I will also say that if you are not, I'm just going to jump into it, okay? All right, we're not, we're not going with the title and then, you know, and all that. This is a year of teaching, amen? amen. So I, I'm going to just jump into it. So, as, 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 a, as a body of believers, as individual Christians, You are not fulfilling the purpose God has for your life until you are actively involved in Christian service. Amen? Amen. You, you don't just come here to hear the singing. You don't just come here to hear the preaching. You don't just come here to, to hear the praise team or, or, or to see the sights or see the show. Or, you, know, you come here to be prepared to go out and to be involved in active service. Amen? Amen. All right, remember we talked about that uh, a couple of weeks ago. We come in here and prepare to go out there and serve. Amen. All right? We come in here to prepare to go out here to serve. We come in here to pray, to prepare, to be taught, to be equipped, to do what? To go out and to serve. Now, it's important that we remember the steps that, that, that you go through in this process. Now, remember I said there's six steps, and you can see I changed the diagram there. Remember last week we had those, those little those circles and it was so small, y'all was <laughs> So I have to change that. Uh, remember, we're born again into the family of God. You're saved. That's the first step. You, you, you take on a new life in Jesus Christ. Uh, you, you're born again. That's the first step. And it's just like childbirth. Amen? You're brand new. You just burst on the scene. You're brand new. Now, uh, I, I had an opportunity uh, to see <coughs> our niece's baby for the first time. She was born uh, a couple of weeks ago. And, yeah, and our goddaughter. And my niece says she's going to have an interesting time explaining to her how they both have the same godparents. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I've known, I've known Tia all my life as my niece. You know, my baby niece. And she walked in there with this baby. I said, do you realize that you're responsible for a human being? You are now responsible for life. This baby is yours. And, and you're responsible for it. I said, I'm having a little difficulty wrapping my mind around that, but you know, work, work with me on this. I know she's going to grow and mature, but that baby was just laying there. And it was so funny when, the, when she brought the baby in, she gave her to Sister Howard. And, and the baby just fell on her, threw her arm around there, and just at peace and had this pretty smile on her face. They gave me the baby. The baby started crying. <laughs> I said, <mean>, here. <laughs> she was hungry. <laughs> That's what we are. Amen. She was. She was hungry. And I said, I ain't got nothing for you. <laughs> I, I can't work with that. Here, come get the baby. <laughs> Amen. That's where we are when we're, when we're born again in Christ. That's where we are. We're crying babies who have wet diapers and other things in our diapers. And, and all we do is just cry and need attention. And then the next step is we get oriented into the new life. We, we talked about that. We start getting fed milk and we start being... Uh, brought along, and, 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 and the person that's responsible for us begins to mature us and help us to grow so that uh, just like children, uh, once they finally start, get around age three or four, and, and they're no longer in the house all the time, they go out and they play with other kids. All right? Now, it's interesting because unlike 
new believers that are integrated into the fellowship of believers, children, when they go out on a playground, they don't have any difficulty playing with each other. They don't care about them. You know, your kid, let's play. They don't care if you're male or female. They don't care if you're black or white. They don't care if you're short or tall. They don't care if you have hair or don't have hair. You know, if you got toys, you're popular. Okay? Uh, you know, kids have a tendency, they just jump in and just play. That's why when, when our kids used to get into it with each other, I, you know, I'd say, you know, I'm not getting involved when that's kid stuff. Amen? You know, they're going to be arguing in a few minutes, and the next thing you know, they're going to be running down the street hopping, and you're going to be here mad. <laughs> Amen. Amen? It amazes me how involved parents get in children's squabbles. Right. Right. And the children will get back together, get quick back in the hurry, and you and I will be sitting there all day. <laughs> you know, I'm always at the same. I say, that's kid stuff. Amen? Yeah. But it's different when they get integrated into the fellowship of believers, as children come into the body of Christ and they learn to play together, we haven't learned to play that well together yet. So when new believers get integrated into the body of believers, it takes some skills, and it takes a lot of love, and it takes a lot of Jesus to help us to be able to play well together. Amen. One of the reasons that so many people are turned off by the church is that we don't play well together. All right? We, we just don't. You know, I've told you that before. And that's problematic because when people come in from the world and they now become Christians, everything has changed. So we're supposed to be developing an environment where we learn how through love and togetherness to really be able to ultimately get to the point where we get actively involved in Christian service. So that's a rough time for us. Amen? We're, we're going to change as a congregation to be able to uh, bring new believers into our congregation where they feel a feeling of genuine love and, and, and support. Amen? We're here to support them emotionally, spiritually. We're here to build them up and to incorporate them into what we're doing with loving arms of protection. Remember, it's a nurturing process. Say nurture. nurture. Amen. Now, nobody, now, now, nobody would take this baby. And, 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 no, you can't be on this week, but you, you, you did good last week. Got you back here this week, too, didn't you? Yeah, no, nobody would want to mistreat that baby. Amen. Amen. You wouldn't want to snatch that baby around and holler at him. Well, <laughs> come on, let me think through this one. <laughs> when we're dealing with children, we have to be loving and tender and compassionate. It's the same way when we're bringing new believers into the fellowship. Now, the next stage, and what we're going to talk about today, is development of a spiritual life. But now, hold on for a minute. Before we get there, discover that we go from orientation into the new life. You're a new believer, you start to see and experience things as a new believer. People start telling you what you can't do, and what you can't, you know, all that. <laughs> then, then we get integrated into the fellowship of believers. The next step is development of a spiritual life. But notice that becomes, that comes before we discover spiritual ministry gifts. I want you to notice that. Why is that important? Because one of the mistakes that we make at, at, in, in mentoring Christians is as soon as they come in, we want to plug them in with their spiritual gift and then send them out to start doing stuff. And they're messed up because they haven't developed a spiritual base yet. They haven't fully developed a spiritual life where they even know and understand and, and, and realize how to operate in those gifts. That's why when they go out there and they start operating these gifts without love, we, we, we don't know that we don't want to mess them up. Stay with me. So the next step in the process is development of a spiritual life. Most let me be careful the way I say that. A lot of us are messed up right now 
because we were expected to do things. 